Hey everybody, it's Jeff Antoniak. Welcome to Digging Deeper Jazz Videos. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. As always, these videos are for all instruments, so no matter what you happen to play, this is gonna be awesome information for you today. And we are talking about enclosures. And this is the fourth, the last video on a little mini series I did on enclosures. As always, these videos are called Digging Deeper because I wanna dig deep. I could have explained this in five minutes, but that would have done nobody any good. So I wanted to stretch it out over the course of four videos. So certainly tune in to the previous three if you want, but you'll be able to you know, get the hang of what we're doing here today, I think as well. But I'd certainly encourage you to go back and check those out. So I tell you what, let's actually uh, hear what an enclosure actually sounds like. <laughs> So all that wiggly, bebop, jazz, whatever sound and stuff, enclosures. There was a ton of enclosures in what I just played. And so that's what I want to talk about. The previous uh, videos talked about what the, what the enclosures are, how to build up to them, and how to practice. And I'm going to talk about this a couple times today. These videos, I do not want to be a passive exercise. I'm glad you guys are sitting there eating popcorn, watching a jazz video on YouTube. But the point of these things is to get your instrument out and try this stuff. So it's cool to passively let stuff go over you and, you know, be edified. Fantastic. It's cool to actually understand it and get it in your head. But as we all know, that doesn't mean it's going to come out your instrument, right? So I don't want you being passive with this stuff. I want you working on it. Okay, so I tell you what, I'm gonna put a sheet up on, um, on the screen right now. This is a PDF I'd love to send you. And this is a three page PDF. So there's a lot of good information here. So I'm gonna put this thing up and I'm gonna play it through twice for you. I'm just gonna play the whole thing through twice in a row so that you can see and hear what's going on. Then we're gonna dissect it a little bit, a little analysis today. Okay, so that is a little etude that I wrote out and I just sat down to write something that sounded like good jazz and would be something I personally would improvise, but I was thinking about, yeah, let me have some examples of enclosures in here. So when I wrote it out, by the way, on the PDF, I have a bunch of pages transposed into B flat and E flat and bass clef. So whatever instrument you're playing, it's on the, on the, uh, on the thing here for you, on the PDF. So now when I counted it up, there were 23 enclosures in these 16 measures. So if that sounded like decent jazz to you, uh, you heard so many enclosures, way more than one a measure. So enclosures. So again, we, we've talked about this in the previous videos. We're talking about the, the simplest thing would be a note above and a note below a target. <laughs> So right there, I played above, below, and then a target note. It turned out to be a D minor triad. Above, below, D concert. Above, below, F concert. Above, below, A concert. So go back to the previous videos, you'll get all caught up on this. So now, what you saw on the screen was a bunch of different types of enclosures. Now here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put uh, another sheet up on the screen. It's what I just played, but it's got a whole bunch of circles all over it. 
and um, we're going to talk about what some, some of these enclosures are. And you're going to see the first enclosure, as far as I'm concerned, is five. And by the way, when I say as far as I'm concerned, let's just go ahead with like, I know what I'm talking about. Okay, good. As far as I'm concerned, those first uh, five notes are leading to the fifth note. So the last note in a circle is the goal of the enclosure. So when I played that, so that line, above, below, above, below, target note, and I can't sing, you know, don't send me hate mail about my singing. Um, above, below, above. So that's different than anything we've talked about. But this idea of encircling a note, zeroing in on the note, tension, 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 release, right? That's the enclosure there. So there's something to practice, right? And now, as I go through, I actually did that same pattern in closing the root, which I did right there, then in the second measure, a five-note enclosure to the third of D minor. Then in the third measure, a five-note enclosure to the fifth. <laughs> So, in those four measures, it was a sort of a long string. And here's the thing. Um, yes, I enclosed, I was being sort of didactic or making my point. I enclosed the root, I enclosed the third, I enclosed the fifth, I enclosed the top root again. But here's the thing. It sounded motivic. It sounded like I was developing an idea, which I was. So not only did I get this great chromatic tension and release in my melody, but I actually had a melody that developed. So let me play those first four measures again. All right, so pretty cool sounding, right? And now, as you can see, I was experimenting. Sometimes I had a diatonic note above. Sometimes I had a half step above. So I was sort of going with what flavor I wanted to hear in the moment. So that's where you get to have fun with it too. The note underneath, the bottom part of the enclosure, almost always, or at least always so far, was a half step. That's a sound that I like. That's a sound that is strongest. It's a leading tone, right? So I'm, let me put the sheet back up for you. And let's look at the end of the fourth measure to the beginning of the fifth measure. So I'm making a circle across two different lines, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven notes. That is a seven note enclosure, six notes leading to the seventh note. So that's pretty fantastic, right? The first video two or two, we talked about half-step approaches, right? Then we started talking about diatonic above, half-step below. So now, instead of just going through and analyzing every possibility, it's kind of infinite, right? So I just wanted to give you a bunch of examples through this piece. So let's continue on. Now, if you look at the second, third, fourth measures of the second line, the second and third and fourth measures of the second line, so again, I'm enclosing all those chord tones. And there was one time when I sort of enclosed a chord tone early. Let me see, it was in the seventh measure of the composition. I enclosed a C sharp over the E half diminished measure. Some of you might say, oh, that's not a chord tone. That's not even a good note to play on an E half diminished. Well, what I'm going to say is I enclosed it early. I was playing ahead of the changes. By an eighth note, not a big deal, right? Cool. Let's continue on. So there's a very nice enclosure there. And now this scale in thirds, a lot of us would call this a scale in thirds. Well, a scale in thirds is kind of by definition, we go from one note up to 
down to one, right? So we could think one, three, two, if you want to talk, you know, scale numbers. That's an enclosure, one, three, two, two, four, three. I know I'm talking numbers, maybe that's not the way you think or hear it, but a scale in thirds is a chain of enclosures, right? So you are beginning to see what's going on there, but it's taking this and sitting and looking at it and kind of analyzing if this is new to you will be great. For those of you that have played enclosures, you know kind of what's up with them. I think you're gonna see a bunch of different kinds of enclosures here. And uh, even for advanced folks, the idea of challenging yourself to see how creative you can be with them. All right, let's continue on a little bit more. All right endless enclosures. So let me do this. I'm going to play the whole thing one more time for you. So, you know, of course you can always just rewind the video, but let me do it one more time for you so you can hear how natural this stuff sounds. And it, it sounds like it might be impossible. How in the world is he thinking to do a seven note enclosure and land on that chord tone right at the perfect time? Well, I tell you what, it's the same way I'm able to talk to you right now. Somehow, almost all of my sentences end coherently ish, right? But more or less, they end. More or less, they make sense. More or less, I've got a noun and a verb and an adjective in there and my tenses are okay. All the syntax kind of works. How in the world do I do that? I wasn't an English major. I've done this enough. I've practiced. I've spoken English. I've heard people talk to me. I've mimicked them, right? So music is exactly the same. Let me play this for you. All right, so uh, 23 enclosures in 16 measures. So I'd love to send you this PDF and for you to kind of sit and look at these enclosures and see what they look like relative to what you hear them sounding like and all that. But like I said, I don't want this to be a passive exercise. It's great to get it intellectually, but I want you playing this stuff. Now, here's the thing, two thoughts on this, uh, important thoughts. Um, one is I've had literally at this point, hundreds of you writing me and asking me about books or why don't I write a book or uh, what would you recommend for a good book of licks, et cetera, et cetera. And here's the thing, there's very good books out there. I know there are really good books and I don't use them and I don't teach with them. And here's why. Most books, I would say every book in jazz should be a maximum of two pages long, maybe three and none of them are that, right? No publisher is gonna publish a two page long book. So we have an idea for that really should be put concisely into two pages, but now we have to make a 100 page book out of it, right? And when the author does that, it gets way too in depth that no one could ever practice what's in that book, especially in different keys, right? And they start saying the same thing in nine different ways to the point where we have no freaking clue what our name is anymore. We're so confused, right? So that's the problem. And that's what I'm trying to do with these videos. Each of these videos, I hope, is a perfect little book on a topic, right? And so that's why there's a three-page enclosure exercise. Yes, I have more printer ink. I've, my computer has more room on it. I could have made it longer. No need to make it longer, okay? So that's it. So that's you know, that, that's my thought sort of on, on the books and everything. There's all, if you, if you work on these enclosures pop properly, this could take years for you to get like really, really into your playing. And I say that in a good way. That's, I hope you're not scared by that. That's the fun part about music, how sort of endless and infinite it is and how you can make it your own, 
right? So there's that part. Now, talking about this passive thing, I want you to be playing this stuff. Now, I've mentioned to you guys before Maryland Summer Jazz, and I really would love for you to come attend Maryland Summer Jazz. Yes, I'm the artistic director. Yes, this is an ad for Maryland Summer Jazz. But here's the thing. You guys are tuning in because you want great information conveyed really precisely, and then you want a chance to play it. That is really what you want, right? Well, so that's why we created Maryland Summer Jazz. That is so hard to find. So I really hope that this will work out for some of you. We do it the last week of July um, every year. And so it's 2018 right now, but if you're watching this six years from now, Maryland Summer Jazz is still going. We've been done it for 14 years. So, and our faculty, what I'm so excited about this year is our faculty. Uh, the, if you add up the bios of our faculty, our faculty has played with Miles Davis. Our faculty members have played with Pat Metheny and Marcus Miller and Tito Puente and Wynton Marcellus and on and on and on. It's nuts. And these are the people you're going to get to hang out with, take classes with, play with, have lunch with and then all the other great adult musicians. So yeah, this is an ad, but this is what you're after, and there's so few places on earth to get it. I hope you'll consider Maryland Summer Jazz. So that's my uh, soapbox moment for the day. Uh, jazz books aren't evil. They're just really hard to, you know, pick and choose what it is you need to get from them, right? And the pacing. So hopefully you got some good information here on enclosures. Uh, hopefully you have a great way to move forward. And again, I'm just gonna encourage you to not have this be a passive thing. I want you to uh, dig into it and get playing and get listening to the stuff and have a great time with the music. Thanks so much. Take care, we'll see you next time.